All right. Hello, Dr. Corpora. Let me just make sure that this is uh, picking up my microphone, which it looks like it is. All right. Um, so this is likely going to be the last of the vlogs uh, for this is the week of November 9th uh, it's before it's due and all. And I thought I would just consolidate all the information that we've gone over in the past couple of weeks. So, you know, after the uh, after the presentations and all that, we went through and we covered uh, you know, the preventative measures, the anti-corruption and international standards. Um, let's see, we had covered lessons learned, uh, you know, particularly focusing on, uh, kleptocracies, extractive industries, and, uh, basically I'm trying to consolidate all of that information and compare and, uh, bring it together to work with what we're working on in our now group assignments for the final presentation. Um, which, uh, gotta say, I'm pretty darn happy with, <laughs> with everyone in my group. Um, the past few groups I've, I've been working in have kind of had me reigning in the, uh, reigning in the cats or, uh, herding cats. And this time around, uh, everyone's jumping right on it, which is making me, <laughs> making me feel pretty good. Uh, don't have to, uh, hurt anyone, but uh, I thought I'd also start out by mentioning the uh, Reporters Without Borders website that you had just recently uh, suggested, which I, I began to look into. I haven't really gone uh, super in-depth uh, looking at it yet. Uh, I'm not entirely certain how well I'll be, like, my group will be able to pull information for the laundromat, the, the Russian laundromat, uh, primarily because this is looking at reporting, and of course, Russia is so very draconian when it comes to their standards for reporting and governmental abuses and ability for citizens to speak freely. So I, I could like, I mean, we will likely be able to turn, tie that into the paper, but as of right now, I, I don't know how much uh, money laundering or other forms of information that'll give, unless it could tie into the oligarchs that we will be looking into later, uh, which is something else I uh, was hoping to mention, that I'm pretty lucky that I'm taking the uh, AML course at the moment, uh, Dr. Zuner's AML, as I'm not particularly a part of the uh, their group that is studying Russia, instead I'm, my, my group's case studies have all been on China, but either way, I've been able to uh, get in contact with the Russian group and uh, ask them a few questions and so that they point me in the right direction so that I don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel, so to speak, when it comes to researching this information. And I believe somebody else in the class actually did a presentation on the Russian laundromat. I just cannot remember whom at the moment, but uh, I have been meaning to get on that as well. It's just been busy crunch time has kind of sprung up on everyone, it seems. Uh, but regardless of that, uh, I thought I'd go through and start talking about, you know, some of the sources that, that you know, we have corroborated and brought together, uh, which I gotta say, Adam Williams did a very good job pulling together a whole bunch of the sources, uh, for us. Um... Primarily, I've looked into the Putin and the oligarchs uh, PDF, which he sent, um, which it's really, really descriptive. Uh, I think it particularly has a fair amount of information about individuals that we will want to look into, kind of people that you would want to create a baseball cord for or start, start looking into. Um, and it does it does provide a lot of context uh, regarding the Yeltsin uh, presidency, which is kind of where it seems our group is uh, wanting to focus on you know the, those Yeltsin years into uh, into how Putin and the ol uh, oligarchy have kind of started to come about, uh, which is actually something kind of interesting I wanted to bring up with the fact that. Um, in recent news, I believe it was confirmed that uh, Putin wants to step down, uh, which is saying something massive for uh, for the sort of Russian society that 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 kind of 
influential sphere of the world because, I mean, it, it, Putin is almost synonymous with Russia for most people my age because we don't really know any other leaders. You know, we we've seen the the leaders of of times past of the the former Soviet Union, and some of us might be able to you know recall what Yeltsin looks like if one was shown a photo. Um, but when we think Russia, or when we hear Russia in the news, we just kind of think, oh yeah, it's run by Putin, uh, in the in the same way that somebody might be able to, you know, say who's currently running the the United States at one moment or another. Um, but I I thought that was uh, worthy of bringing in because we might have more implications to tie into our paper than. Uh, ordinary. Uh, there, there may be, you know, a, a, a set of changes that we need to accommodate for or, or be aware of um, that we haven't seen in a really long time, or, or, well, in fact, really at all in in the past 10 plus years of, of Russian history. Um, but the other sources, uh, as I should say, um, that that we've gone into, um, they definitely have uh, have been, you know, pretty good uh, beginners for all of this. Uh, Adam also photoco or not photocopied, but he took photos of uh, pages of the book that you lent him and uh, got them to us, which has been uh, really helpful for contextualizing and kind of preparing to get into this case. Um, I should also, while I'm while I'm on the topic of the case, I'll, uh, I will pull up the matrices and uh, other elements that we've gone over and talked about there, just because they'll, uh, they're they're some of the more concise, uh, they're some of the more concise methods and ways that we have uh, brought together our thinking. We didn't really focus much on the Matrix uh, during our one-on-one -on -one session. We were, we were pretty heavily focused on the, uh, the conceptual model, which obviously, as you've noted, you know, it's a living document. And so we've been working through it, and uh, it's all kind of coming together, uh, focusing interpersonally, I guess, where we're all trying to make sure that we understand every big player, that every big player is included in their subsets of oligarchy, you know, Putin and his friends, um, uh, Mihai, uh, oh, goodness, I can't remember his last name, but they're, uh, you know, repeating names, of, uh, essentially, from source to source. Uh, but let me see, I've just pulled up the matrix here. And it, we've kind of identified a couple of pretty key sources out of the ones that have been sent, including... Uh, the oligarchy as a political problem, which provided a fair amount of uh, a fair amount of information for our subsets of the matrix. Um, the capital flight documents, uh, Putin and the oligarchs, which I you know, I've gone through uh, oligarchy and corruption, as well as a book that uh, was lent, and then uh, yes, here we go. So we we've already begun to go through some of the some of the key figures including um oh my goodness please uh Simon Mogilevich yeah uh prominent russian ma mafia leaders the you know the employees of the bank of new york uh, uh with peter berlin and lucy edwards and tasha uh kagalovsky and victor bout uh, who are you know they they begin to bring in these uh elements of arms trafficking and and uh the mafia, the, the the sort of kleptocracy that we've talked about, where uh, not uh, you know furthest removed interests are governing the state, uh, things along those lines. But we've noticed it seems to be that there uh, a kind of a a teen consensus that it's very difficult for us so far to consolidate cross sectionally, uh, where where the information is rather particular at the moment you know we we have information that that does uh that does overlap but it's difficult for us to bring 
some of our points and be like, okay, we, we have this one box, or, or we, we have three boxes. We have one in legal, one in historical, and one in social. Uh, how, do we, how do we turn into one box? Because it seems like they could be. Um, so instead of doing that, it looks like we might be honing in and instead focusing, you know, uh, we, we, we won't just have matrix, historical, lit- legal, political, social. We'll have uh, just a singular social matrix with uh, elements that we're able to look into um, cross-sectionally or, or that require more of a deep dive and try and do it that way uh, using the uh, the question or the evidence that we have as the framing device, and then seeing how we can how we can bring it across uh, to bring you know one thing uh, w- one element f- from one subset to another. Um, but we it seems like we're trying a lot. Of, uh, you know the the general general method that we've been taking is we're we're just kind of trying to. Uh, effectively build a link chart in our minds so far of um of Putin and effectively his uh wouldn't say cronies but you know assistants in in all of this and and how he's kind of managed to rein everyone in to create the laundromat in the way that it uh came out to be um and that's that's really what the Putin and the oligarchs article uh went into but um Tying this into into what we've gone through in class so far, uh, it's been great that we've been suggested the AML aspects, you know, of uh, of the UNCAC and the uh, and the FATF and the oh, I mean, I, I believe the OECD is even uh, has even looked into this. I, I yeah, we we've gone over uh, that kind of thing before. And just how we can, uh, all, all of these together, how we might be able to uh, spot the discrepancies and and uh, further create recommendations, of course, in line with what already exists uh, by the end of the paper. You know, kind of thinking towards that end goal already, uh, since the situation is what it is. It's 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 almost um, it's almost nondescript in the moment, but. Um, uh, that's from the anti-corruption international standards portion and sorry I'm just reading over my notes to make sure that I uh, yes there it is the uh, financial action task force and the OECD together and the uh, illicit trade anti-bribery aspects uh I'm not entirely certain. I have outside of the documents that have been uh that we've been focusing on, I haven't really made a a a big effort to search out which of the elements of civil society might be looking into this. I know that you suggested um reporters without borders. Um but I haven't looked into see Transparency International's uh development for this or uh, the OCCRP, the Anti-Corruption Analyst Network, the uh, UNCAC Coalition, the Soros Initiative. Yeah, I haven't. We haven't really looked into those. I know that they're present and something that we should be uh, aware of looking into. However, we haven't just, uh, or at least I have not yet, began searching that out. I, I've started out with the uh, surface level, and then you know a little bit deeper. The, the the links of the PDFs that we find that the the embedded ones in there, those from there, finding the names of people who crop up again and again, whether it's uh, reporters or um, or uh, people who are involved in the schemes and problems. So uh, perhaps I'm going about it a bit backwards, and should instead be getting uh the civil society elements and then going down from there and seeing what documents they have produced but either way the end goal is hoping to be the same i just intend to get to that um and of course we've been looking in at the uh the scpa elements uh primarily because there there's a a pretty hefty economic portion of that of course 
uh, looking into elements that might be considered portions of money laundering and, and, and how financial institutions and their aspects of compliance or due diligence or anti-bribery, each of these kind of play into our cases, uh, or our, our case, since it's the laundromat, you know, it's, it's, uh, just among the largest, you know, money laundering aspects yet, um, my goodness, oops, let's see, um, Of course, uh, then the kind of I'm getting down to the the lessons learned aspect since we've really managed to hammer home this idea of the kleptocracy and non-state interests running the state. Uh, which, if if uh, this isn't a good example of you know non-state interests being overly powerful, the oligarchies and and all of these consolidations and methods like that. Um, I don't know what is. Uh, of course, we're not a, we're not looking at the extractive industries, uh, but we are kind of looking at the clientelism, nepotism, uh, as well as the public financing and contracting, uh, because so many of the oligarchy elements that uh, arose and uh, that that came about in Russia came about from small legitimate or, you know, legitimate fronts kind of just grabbing whatever they could is is almost a scramble for an economy. And uh, once once they grabbed and got their hands on whatever they could, they turned it into their, uh, their effective kleptocracy, their, their contracting and their insider uh, everything, really, uh, since nothing had really made sense in the... Uh, in the times of, uh, in the times of the oligarchy, uh, I'm trying to re remember what the example they had given was, but um, it was something along the lines of, you know, they, saunas would purchase like you know, very irrelevant things. I just can't remember what at the moment. I I don't think they put it in the matrix. Um. But, yeah, uh, and of course, as I mentioned earlier, I uh, kind of briefly went over it, the elements of, you know, the, it, it was on our, it was on our conceptual model, um, in which, uh, in which we were looking at the three elements of the oligarchies, I just cannot remember them at the moment, the, the Friends of Putin, the you know uh structured oligarchs the uh from previously and the the family yeah uh, of course that's kind of why where, where I want to uh get information from people who have uh done this before since there was a security aspect that was reined in by the russian um uh Oh, oh, the security aspect, which was reined in by the Russian government and uh, and their involvement with the uh, oligarchy, that was touched on in one of the students' presentations. I again, like I said, I just can't remember whom, so I need to jog my memory on that one. But that's kind of where we're at. It it, it sounds like it's a little bit surface level at the moment, but uh, we've been making good strides. Uh, Everything that we've been, you know, able to talk about, whether in my, you know, in the AML class, which I believe I'm the only member of currently, but um, Caitlin Johnson has taken it before, and uh, Dr. Kazuner seems to have the Russian group always go over that. So uh, we have some very, uh, yeah, not not there. We don't have differing perspectives, but we do have the option of uh, looking at how different people uh, were able to interpret it. But otherwise, uh, where is it going to go with that? It, it, we're just, we're making good progress, is, is effectively what I, what I was trying to say. Um, everyone's obviously pulling their weight, producing sources, uh, adding on to elements of ICPs, and uh, making sure that we know what we want. I, yeah, we, we None of us have begun a link chart yet, but it seems like we all kind of have one in our mind, and that if we all sat around and either shared our screen or got around a computer together, we'd be able to 
uh, crank a pretty killer one out that could then really relate into a dashboard style presentation with, as we've noted before, the, the baseball cards and that kind of thing. But I've been talking for about 20 minutes here yet again. So uh, it seems like this will be the last of the vlogs. Uh, hopefully it's all well and good for, for the order. And otherwise, uh, I will talk to you then later in class. Uh, hopefully get the opportunity to see you again, but who knows with how COVID is at the moment. A little scary, but <laughs> that's just how it is now. Uh, I will talk to you later, Dr. Corporate. Thank you.